Hey everyone, how you doing? This is Josh, Urban Armed. And I posted a photo on Instagram a few days ago. Had my mountain bike on here and got a question about how I had it mounted on my rack system. I was looking for a rack or some kind of easy rack system. Couldn't find one to work with what I needed, so I kind of just hobbled one together. So, I uh, thought I would just do a quick video for those that are into mountain biking and overlanding and taking your bike with you when you go camping and that kind of thing. Now, it's gonna kind of vary depending upon your rack system. I'm using the KB Voodoo High Rise Crossbars, although they're not very high rise. <laughs> I don't know why they're called that, it should be low rise. Um, they're probably only about five, nah, not even, maybe maybe three, three and a half, four inches from the top of the uh, bed cover. However, if you didn't have a tonneau cover on here, it would be maybe a little bit higher. So I guess it'd be considered high rise. In any case, they have slots that go through the top, which works great for mounting my rooftop tent on. I just basically drop the carriage bolts through and I can put the nut on the bottom side. So I was kind of looking for some way to mount the bike and the wheel. Uh, I'll show you that in just a moment on the other side. And I can't came up with a DIY solution and thought I would just kind of go over that with you a little bit. So up front, I've got just a simple fork mount, which I used some quarter 20 bolts through and some uh, washers and nuts on the bottom side to fasten that to the outside of the bed rack. And then I, you know, that worked out pretty well and this has been on here tight. I've driven a couple hundred miles on washboarded dirt roads and it's been bouncing around and haven't had anything come loose yet, knock on wood. And then what I did is in the back, I, I actually did buy a Yakima uh, wheel tray from a bike. I actually went to a couple different bike shops and I picked it up used, it was $5. The fork mount was 22 bucks. And then on the other side, I picked up a demo Thule wheel rack for, I think it was $30. So all in for like 55 bucks, I was able to, in some hardware, maybe five bucks there, I was able to at least get it mounted and I wanted it to be quick access. So on the back, I, the back tire sits on the tonneau cover and I'm not using the Yakima bike or the wheel tray just yet because I wanted to see how well it would do with just kind of fastening it and securing it to the rear crossbar. And it's done really well because I was trying to avoid putting any bolts through the tonneau cover. I want to drill through it. And I just am using a bungee strap and this kind of rubber, uh, I don't know really know what you call them. I got them at, at Lowe's, a uh, little pack. They're like these bungee reusable uh, fasteners. And that just kind of is a secondary point. And this bike, um, uh, we had some major wind gusts coming back from Buena Vista. We just got back from a five day overlanding trip and it you know, didn't move. Uh, the wheel didn't really slide out too much. And there is the rear cleat to kind of give it a little bit of something to lean up against. So it's, it'd have to really, this would all have to come loose. So the tire would have to pop up and over. So would I recommend this? set up for uh, serious off-roading? Probably not. Uh, again, you also had, go through a lot of narrow passages and you have a lot of trees and stuff that might grab at this and pull it. So I wouldn't do that, but it worked great for just getting where I wanted to go, setting up at the campsite. I took it off and I was able to ride around for a few days and I didn't put it back on. I just left it in camp. So what I'm gonna do is um, we'll go to the other side and take a look at how I have the Thule rack on. It's not complete just yet, but I'll kind of show you what uh, my plan is for that because if you can find that rack and you have any kind of crossbar, it should work okay for you. So we'll walk around. And so uh, on this side, I just basically have the Thule. Right now, it's actually not on the way I'm going to have it on all the time. I needed to go to Lowe's and get some longer bolts that came with this. So I'm gonna come and I'll give you a close-up shot of how this is set up. 
but essentially I've got just two bolts through the slot so the rear doesn't have anything secured, but it's tight enough. And where I put this on the rack, the tire sits on top of the Diamondback bed cover. And then I just have the wheel slotted in like you normally would. And it makes it really easy to take off. Uh, and then I can just take this guy off with the, it has the plastic wing nuts underneath. So that's working out really well. This, this actually came with uh, some mounting brackets that go underneath the bar and I will use those. I just need longer bolts to go through, probably another inch longer so that I can, they, they'll, uh, you know, fit over this crossbar right now. These bolts are too short. So I literally just have only two holding down, going through the slot and bolted up underneath. But, you know, this isn't super heavy. So it, it doesn't, and, it, and I just put another bungee cord on the side to hold it down. And that worked out just to keep it from bouncing. It's secured uh, to this really nicely. I mean, that's pretty tight. It's not gonna come out of the rack. And I just use a single bungee to keep it from bouncing up and down. And holy crap, this worked out really well. I don't know if I'll use the tray or not. You just kind of have to get a little crafty sometimes when you're trying to put everything, you know, on top because I need the back of the bed to store all of the, uh, the gear for camping. So everything that I can put on top or strap down just frees up a lot more space back here. If you're doing multi-day trips, uh, four, five, six days, you're probably carrying you know, a good amount of water and food and then you know, your stove and all that other fun stuff you take with you. I'm eventually gonna do kind of a overview of all the stuff that I take with me when I go camping. It's always evolving and changing, but some of the stuff is not. It's pretty, pretty much gonna be the way it is for at least the foreseeable future. Um, I'll be doing some other, uh, videos on my truck, like the way I have like my rack set up, um, Pelican case, I got my max tracks on the other side. So there's a lot going on, but I'm still trying to figure out the best configuration. Uh, so this worked out really well. This setup I've done for two different trips now. Um, first trip was only two days. Second trip was five days and I didn't have any issues, especially with a lot of wind and a lot of bumpy roads, a lot of dirt roads. We, you know, where I'm at, it's uh, about 11 miles, uh, all dirt road, and it's getting really washboardy because we haven't had a lot of rain. So I get a lot of bouncing back here. And so far, this system has held up. So, you know, again, I was able to get, pick this up for 30 bucks. If you just go to a couple bike shops and ask if they have any used stuff, demo stuff, spare parts, you can kind of, you know, put something together that will probably work. The biggest thing is, is having a fork mount for your spare wheel if you want to carry that uh, up top or down below. I don't really like the, the racks where the bike is completely on top. It's just really high and I try to keep everything as low profile as possible. And this works. The system has been working out for me quite well so far. I'll probably, like I said, the only thing I'm going to do is this will slide up and I'll put those uh, little brackets. They're just brackets that go underneath and then the screws will go through and into those and I'll be able to tighten it up. That will really keep it really sturdy. The nice thing is it's quick release. So I can take this off in just a minute. And on the other side, there's nothing really to remove. I just leave that fork mount on. It's not going anywhere and that's it. So it keeps everything really mobile, portable, easy to take off, move around. And I like it so far. It's been working out nice. So I'll kind of do a little walk around for you and just give you a little bit of a view from the side and the front. And, um, you know, if you have any um, other suggestions or anything, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions about anything, post a comment down in the question. Hit me up on Instagram, just Urban Armed, and uh, Facebook as well, although I'm more active on Instagram than any other social media platform uh, besides YouTube. So um, I've got a lot of other gear I've been using 
and testing as part of my Digital Nomad Overlander series. So I'll have some videos coming out on that. So hit the subscribe button if that's something that you're in interested in, whether you're working or editing video on the road or doing any kinds of things. I literally set up a mobile office using the Gazelle T410, some, a Goal Zero uh, 400 with the solar panels and a couple different hotspots um, that worked out great for this particular trip. I worked two out of the five days. So um, yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment down below and I'll try to get to them. Also if, just uh, hit me up on Instagram if there's anything particular you wanna know more about. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. I hope you all having a great day, great week, a great October. It's the, I can't believe it's already October weather is starting to get a little cooler so thanks for watching talk to you later